next thing I'll go ahead and show you is about how to go in and initiate a remote control broker session and what it takes to get that set up on the other side. Okay, a couple more stops on our way of our configuration. Um, so just real briefly, so this is exactly the way I send these out. So um, if you've already had a target out there in the wild, um, this is going to be your configuration task. We did this exact same thing, uh, basically when we were setting up the uh, in the prior videos when we first set up uh, doing a remote control session. So this is no different than that. The only difference is, is that we're actually going to populate the broker list and the trusted certificate for it. So again, I kind of go in the uh, kick in the door strategy. I'm actually going to pull up one uh, just so you can see a good working one, uh, which is today. Actually, we tested this earlier. Um, so what I did is I went ahead and loaded up a prior configuration task. So just to show you the basically the way that this works, you can obviously configure this for Linux, Mac, Windows. You know, today we're doing for a Windows target. Uh, but basically, you know, same exact methodology throughout, right? Um, we're going to go ahead and configure it if it can connect internally. Where is it going to do that? Uh, that's what that's for. And then you got your broker list, right? We're keeping this FQ FQDN the same everywhere, right? So that's what it's looking for, right? That's what needs to be your publicly listed, you know, DNS entry, whatever you're going to do. Um, now, if I were actually uh, going ahead and actually editing this piece, right? So let's say, all right, so that makes it so that you can actually go in there, right? Um, this is the same uh, output of the cert.arm. That's the same exact one that we're using here. Um, so you use the same that, that cert.arm file from when you create that certificate. Those That goes into two places. One over at when you configure the broker at the remote control server level. And this is the connection side so that it can actually, uh, like out of any better phrasing, uh, authentic, authenticate. So you're going to set that up. Um, now, all these settings, like I said, I'll let you see what I got here. Uh, but these are very much so, as I said again, uh, kick in the door settings. You probably don't want to be as aggressive with this as I am. Um, as you can tell, I did enable high color qualities. Now, in terms of uh, me being a little bit meaner on this, is that um, I turned off all the confirming of everything from the user side of things so that once they initiate the session, I mean, we're, we're going, right? Um, so, and that's both from the internal side. Um, now, obviously, if you're doing it over a broker session, um, they have to actually enter a connection code, which I'll show you. But basically, once you get this configured the way you're liking, just making sure that these guys are correct and the remote control port is correct, um, you basically create a new configuration task, which will basically create a new fixlet to do this configuration piece. Uh, it will become relevant against any of your, uh, in this example, Windows, uh, targets. So you can send this against your targets and it'll go ahead and configure them to use the broker um, if they're not in a direct, uh, you know, local area network type connection. Um, so basically you just kind of take action on that and uh, it'll allow you to go ahead and do your broker connections. Okay, um, so basically we've sent out the uh, configuration task on a uh, pre-installed target out there. And um, so basically what we're going to do now is actually uh, jump over to our remote control server, which I've done here. Um, so this is the last piece to kind of make sure you've got everything configured right. So you're going to go to targets and you're going to start broker session. You're going to see that it downloads it down here, right? That's going to go ahead and kick off your controller software. Now what this is going to do is this is going to connect up to the broker. Right, so you're connected up to the broker. It creates a connection code. So this is where you're basically going to provide this connection code to the person that is attempting to connect over the internet uh, to go ahead and establish that session. So it gives you a default 15 minute timer. Um, you can go ahead and extend your timeouts, request new, uh, whatever you need to do. But if you get this far, that means internally your big fix remote control server is um, connecting. Um, it is uh, making it so that. The only thing it's waiting for right at this moment is the other end of that connection, which is the um, remote control target to type in that connection code and utilize the certificate that we've got it preloaded with, and you're there. So um, on this next stretch of the video, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to pass this uh, recording capability over to uh, Mr. Uh, Tamalo, uh, fellow technical advisor on a target system that is geographically nowhere near where I'm located. Uh, to go ahead and uh, finish out this process. Hi, my name is Dave Tamalo. I'm a Big Fix technical advisor uh, based in Chicago, and I'm working with Dave Finney, who's based in Colorado, um, to show part of the remote control 
uh, process. I've got a Windows 10 machine that I've registered into Dave's uh, Big Fix environment uh, with the agent and the masthead from his environment. And we've also st installed the uh, remote control target on this machine. So he's given me a connection code to set to uh, start a new connection. So all I have to do is go down to my system tray. And I've got this remote control icon here and I can right click on it. And I can pick the option enter connection code. And then I just type it in 814-2613 and click connect and my connection to his environment is established. At this point I'll pass it over to Dave to show what he can see from his side. All right thank you Mr. Tamalo we're back over uh, on uh, my system back in Colorado um, successfully set up that connection. Um, as you can see here, just got an active little session here. There was a uh, remote control OK button to click here. I went ahead and did that already. Um, but, you know, just kind of show you just a little bit about the interface. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of make a couple of uh, test documents. So this is all going over uh, the, uh, the Internet right now. So that's kind of the beauty of it. Uh, well. Hi, Mr. Tamalo, why not? Um, and so, you know, just kind of just showing basically how this, uh, how this works, how this exists, right? Um, so the other things I wanted to kind of show off is that uh, you do have all these options up here at the top of your screen. Um, so you have the ability to actually go ahead and perform actions on the target. This could be sending Alt F4s, Control Deletes, whatever you want to do. Uh, drawing and highlight tools, those are kind of self-explanatory, but great for guidance too. So that's something that Dave could see on his side as I'm going through that. Um, also gives us the ability to launch some uh, other kind of shortcut. Um, so like, say, for example, our command prompt, right? So very easy to do that. We can go ahead and do a, uh, that, that's a, not even an elevated one. Here's an elevated one, which you do still have the rights to click that, which is nice. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you can kind of jump around to wherever you want, uh, just kind of quick access, which is, which is really nice, uh, for the interface to be able to do. Um, so the next thing I wanted to kind of show you is that you do have, like I said, above and beyond all this, uh, you do have the ability to also grab information off the system, which is this, um, uh, that button right there, which will go ahead and bring up kind of a snapshot of what the system currently is up to. Um, you do have the ability, this is the ability to go ahead and actually add more operators. Uh, you have some more controller tools, so you can do screen captures, whatever you need. If you wanted to record, you can do that right here. Um, we can actually do a file transfer as well, uh, and you're able to do also a clipboard transfer. So just to show, I'm going to send a file over to, uh, to Dave real quick here. I'm actually going to go off of my desktop um, here, and so I'm actually going to go grab that demo cert that we were messing with earlier. And I'm just going to send that. Um, oh, it's apparently the same file I sent before, but we're going to send it again. And that was as quickly as it took to get there. Um, and it shows you exactly the path to where I put it. So it's very easy to figure out, you know, what took place. Uh, you have a nice little shortcut here, if I'm not mistaken, that will take you straight to it. Um, so there it is, right? Pretty sweet. Um, the only other things I wanted to kind of call out, you do have some, you know, ability to see exactly how the uh, response time is. Um, there is some other, you know, sections here in the top right of your screen that allow you to kind of, you know, change how the controller is interacting and adjusting qual color qualities or whatever you're wanting to do to kind of speed up that connection. The last thing I wanted to show here is actually this one uh, little bubble. I know you guys were kind of watching me, dart, you know, dart my way around that, but it's actually a chat window, and I like this a lot um, because it's it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy to use. So now Dave sees that over on his side. And, uh, you know, he has the ability to type back, so. And uh, so, yeah, he's sending a message back to me. So it's very easy to kind of interact with. Plus, you can kind of see that we were messing around with this earlier. Um, so you have a nice little log of what was taking place, but just gives you a lot of capability here to be, begin working with. And so, yeah, just kind of wanted to show everybody how that works. Um, I'll jump back here in a second, and we'll just do a closing slide and round out the session. Thank you all for your time today and for joining me for the installing Big Fix Remote Control Broker session along with uh, the configuration of that. If there are any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out because we are always happy to help.